a very good Saturday to everyone. It is September the 9th. Welcome to the Sports Note. I understand that I've actually been away for a couple of weeks here. Uh, quite honestly, without the exception, without going into uh, the opening week of the college football season, there really hadn't been a whole lot going on. It's so, you know, NBA camps don't open for a little while, NHL camps don't open for uh, another week or so. Even though I think we've got. Um, you know some exhibition games coming up in the next week or two uh but where we saw the nfl season kick off on thursday night with the lions upsetting the the uh kansas city chiefs uh but the the other topic right now that came out that i definitely don't want to say got swept under the rug but with everything else going on right now with college football and especially all the realignment talk uh it's the remaining two members of the Pac-12 causing quite a stir and completely justified. And that would be uh, Washington State and Oregon State. Now, we know that the the Pac-12 actually saw just about all of their teams vacate. We saw 10 of the the 12 teams announce that they are leaving the conference. We've got Utah, Colorado, Arizona, Arizona State going to the Big 12. Uh, We've got, I'm I'm sorry, we've got... um, yeah, it, it, yeah, I was right on those four. Uh, and then we've also got USC, UCLA, uh, Oregon, and Washington headed to the Big Ten in a couple of years. And that leaves Washington State and Oregon State as the two odd teams out. And if you're a Pac-12 fan, um, this, is, this, this could signify the end of your conference. This could be something where the conference completely dissolves. This, uh, does the conference... Uh, absorb uh, in the the entire Mountain West and dissolve that conference. We'll get to that here in a couple of moments uh, as to the arguments uh, involved. But the two universities, namely their presidents, filed uh, court papers on on early Friday, seeking to vacate the the upcoming Pac-12 meetings because the 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 school. Uh, the conferences, the schools of the conference, have not met since August the fourth, and that was actually before uh, the the most recent round where um, where Stanford, Cal, and SMU were uh, were essentially kind of accepted in by the ACC, even though those schools have not officially announced uh, their departure. Uh, but at this particular point, by them getting accepted in, means that they've actually had talks with that conference so this really realistically only leaves wazoo and oregon state as the last two members of the pac-12 conference after next year and what the injunction or paperwork is looking to file is that by all of those other schools vacating those are the only two teams still left in the conference and should be the only teams permitted to vote on conference affairs where it comes to assets where it comes to on uh, uh, the, the the existing comcast tv contract that runs out after next year um if the conference were to dissolve it would be something where the the assets of the uh, of the entire conference that they built up would have to be distributed uh, all it, it certainly not evenly at this particular point it, it should be something that if that were to happen the large chunk of that uh, quite honestly if that were to happen those two uh, those two remaining schools should get 50 percent of those assets and then let the other 10 fight out you know amongst the rest of it at this point because the other uh, the other 10 schools are, have already made their intentions known of of leaving and filed the necessary paperwork. It's been it's been accepted uh, by those other conferences and and uh, and the NCAA. Uh, but it's definitely something that next after next year we're going to see a dramatic change in in college sports because the the, the Pac-12 and and even the Pac-10 and the Pac-8, you know, when when we were younger was. Uh, uh, for even like when my dad was you know growing up it was and and UCLA was in their heyday uh it was the Pac-8 but it's it's an idea now that you're taking teams out of major markets Pasadena Seattle Portland <coughs> um and more I uh, namely the Portland market even though uh the Ducks play in Eugene uh you're taking you're taking teams now out of 
uh, Boulder, you're, uh, which is a pretty prominent city, and, and you still kind of maybe get a little bit of that Denver demographic. You're taking a team out of, uh, you're taking a school out of uh, Salt Lake City. You're taking away the Phoenix market. You're taking away the Scottsdale market. Basically, the entire state of Arizona uh, is leaving the conference, which is a pretty significant TV market. Um, and then again, now at this point, if they absolve, uh, uh, if they accept and and essentially you see the Mountain West get completely dissolved in, you're going to have going from again your Los Angeles, your Pasadena, your 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 Colorado, your your Arizona markets, your Salt Lake City, and then you're going to be replacing them with with markets like Boise and like Fresno. Um, which is where I mean Utah. Remember, came out of that conference and then joined the uh, the the Pac-12 is now and is now going to the Big 12. Uh, so this is now going to be three conference shifts for them in the matter of 14 years by the time it's all done. Because I want to say that they they left around 2011 and then they'd be officially joining the Pac-12 uh, in time for the 2024-2025 fall schedule. Um, so yeah, you're looking at 14 years and now. Utah, who were the BCS busters, um, you know, after Boise State kind of came back down to earth, but Utah is actually shown to act, uh, to still have staying power and should fit in nicely with the Big Twelve. But still, where does this leave the other two schools that have been long-standing members of the Pac-12, even though they are not the they are probably the two least successful schools. Out of the Pac-12, and let's also be honest. This is a very uncomfortable situation for both of these schools because they have actually been orphaned now, and they are the the schools that at that point kind of leech on because of the markets that they're in. Washington and Washington State is the natural in-state rivalry. It's the state school. Oregon, Oregon State, same thing. You've got a civil war. You've got the Apple Cup. Um, but it's it's something now that Big Brother is actually moving on to greener pastures. Little Brother's now got to fight for themselves, and now they're going to be accepting in. It might actually work out pretty well because those schools are not on the level of, of the other schools in the Pac-12 right now, with maybe the exception at least this year being Oregon State, who's currently ranked 16th in the, uh, in the college football AP polls. Uh, and could actually make some noise with as competitive as the Pac-12 is going to be. Go figure, the last major year of the Pac-12 as we know it, and Oregon State's got a shot to actually win the conference this year, um, you know, barring what happens with uh, with uh, Utah, uh, Oregon, and Washington all ahead of them. Um, but it's something that every conference has got a school that kind of leeches on and enjoys the revenue sharing may kind of fatten up the numbers in the Big Ten. Uh, in it's it's typically been Rutgers. It's uh, uh, Purdue has always been strong in basketball, not so much in football. Uh, Northwestern, even when they've been bad, people still talk about them. The basketball program is starting to take a little bit of uh, you know is is on the uptick. Indiana's one that's typically been a college basketball mainstay. Uh, but football, really not so much. In the Big 12, it's a very weird schematic because Iowa State is kind of a middle of the road, but you'd figure they could be that considered that team. Baylor has gotten much better in both as opposed to being uh, the bottom feeders for a lot of years between uh, college basketball and college fo- uh, men's college basketball, at least. Their, co- their women's college basketball program is one of the best in the country over the last 15, 20 years. Um, but you've got Kansas in there, who's perpetually one of the worst teams in the country. Uh, they have a couple; they have a good year here or there. But they've actually they are King Kong of the uh, of the Big Twelve in terms of basketball uh, in the SEC. It's without a doubt it's Vanderbilt. Uh, but then you've also got Ole Miss has not been the greatest uh, in 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 a number of sports at least in terms of big money making sports uh they're they're there uh but they're not you know they're not certainly contending for conference titles uh florida is still it is even though florida has not been as competitive over maybe let's say the last 10 years as they were you know 
15, 20 years ago when they were winning national championships, getting to Final Fours, getting to BCS playoffs, etc. Um, Florida is still a very, very marketable name, and especially now with that Netflix documentary that just came out about uh, the the Urban Meyer squad, uh, the Tim Tebow squad, um, the Aaron Hernandez squad. Um, but it's again, it's it's typically Vanderbilt in the SEC. So you've got Washington State and Oregon State who have not really made a massive dent in in college football. Neither school has has really won has neither school has ever won a a Pac-12 football championship. Washington State was the uh, was the national runner-up in the NCAA tournament. The problem was is that was back in the 1930s. Um, and the game, I want to say, was like 38-35 or something like that, or 35-30 to for a final score. Um, neither school has, I, I want to say, made a final four in the last 30 years. Um, so it, it's it's something that the conferences have have a big big decision here as to now what happens is there is is another one of these major conferences going to reach out and be the final straw that breaks the Pac 12's back where they have to completely dissolve one of the most historic conferences that we've ever seen um and and accept them in is is the Mountain West going to bring that conference to 14 even though it's going to be much more inferior competition at that point. The other aspect is that this is all uh, this is really all driven by football and it's it's been well 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 established and it's also going to put both schools in a little bit of of an uneasy situation again not you know not playing within that conference uh at that point where they've been for decades but it's also you're going to have a rivalry game that's going to be going outside of conference, uh, and and we don't see that too often anymore. We've got you know your Red River shootout is two Big Twelve teams. The uh, the game Ohio State Michigan is two Big Ten teams. Uh, you've got the Iron Bowl two uh, SEC West teams. There's not very many scenarios where a trophy like game. Uh, uh, like this is going to be outside of conference. The one that immediately comes to mind is Florida, Florida State. You got SEC versus ACC. Now you're going to have, um, you're going to have Oregon, Oregon State is going to be Big Ten versus either Pac-12 or Mountain West, and then you're going to have the same thing with the Apple Cup. You're going to have either Pac-12 or or Mountain West against Big Ten. Um, Colorado, Colorado State. That's been a cross conference, uh, you know, rivalry there since Colorado jumped to the Pac-12, uh, but a little over a decade ago. So, uh, so you've got Mountain West against uh, against big uh, against uh, Pac-12, and now that's going to be going back to Mo- uh, Mountain West against Big Twelve. Um, and remember that that Colorado State, you know, was in the was in the Big Twelve once upon a time, or even when it was the Big Eight, uh, but you know, certainly made the the jump when uh, when the Pac twelve when the Big Twelve started losing, you know, a bunch of teams when they lost when they lost Mizzou when they lost Texas A and M to the SEC. Uh, you actually saw um, West Virginia got added in, turning that into almost a cross country a uh, cross country conference. Um, so it's it's definitely very very strange territory that we're in that we could actually see the dominoes are certainly nowhere near completely have fallen and both of those schools are the only two schools in the entire Pac-12 that are under 500 with their historical record in college football although I want to say like Oregon State is like at 4 at 499 uh, and and could actually end up ticking up above that if they have a successful year this year, uh, but it's also something that if you're these two schools, you've got a legitimate argument here, and and any any judge ruling should reflect this. This should be something that says, hey, we were not given 
complete transparency by the 10 universities who have announced that they're going to leave this uh, this conference, especially with the money that's being made, the money that's getting shared, the TV contract with Comcast, which ironically enough ends after next year anyway. And why would Comcast want to pick up, you know, and re-sign another contract? First of all, if that conference completely dissolves, and then secondly, if they do absorb in the Mountain West, and you're going to actually have, uh, again, you're going to have. Uh, Fresno, you're going to actually add in uh, Colorado Springs, you're going to add in Boise. Secondary or third level markets at that point, they may still get, actually get a decent TV deal, but it's not going to be nearly as much as what it would have been had the Pac-12 stayed where it was. But we know that the uh, that the Big Ten's uh, deal is going to explode next year. We know the SEC deal is going to explode. Uh, your your Big Twelve deal is definitely going to go up when it comes up here in a few years as well. Uh, but there should be no reason here why the last two remaining schools could not potentially hold this entire conference hostage with assets at that point. I'm not saying that. Both schools are going to basically figure out a way to shut everybody out, and then they're going to reap all the benefits. It would be amazing if they could, which actually means because if that were the case, then you know if they're taking 50% of the profits, that's actually more than double what their entire football revenue was uh, a year ago. The, uh, the They're the two lowest generating schools in the conference as well. Oregon State only brought in $87.7 million uh, in revenue last year, and Wazoo was 84.1, whereas some of the other schools were earning way up over $110 million, like your USC's, your UCLA's, even your Stanford's. Uh, we're, we're all north of, of 95 to $100 million. So let me know what you guys think. Does uh, Do Wazoo and Oregon State have a case here? What would you like to see happen with the Pac-12 now that there's only these two lower-end schools remaining? Uh, who do you think... Uh, uh, would be a what do you think would be a better fit do you see them going somewhere else and dissolving the pac-12 do you see them bringing in the mountain west do you see them going a different direction uh do you actually see something where this all collapses within the next five or six years as well because then you're going to start figuring out uh if you're a usc or you are you're a ucla oh wait we're not making as much money off of this because we can't get into big 10 title games or SEC title games or Final Fours uh, as as is because we've got so much better competition now in front of us uh, that we're losing out money on. So Oklahoma was a perennial uh, BCS team. Now them going to the SEC, there's no guarantee they're even going to get out of their, their division uh, to be able to not only get into... Uh, the playoff as, as, as a decent at-large team, but maybe even get a buy or even be featured in a conference championship game that's going to generate revenue. Uh, who's to say that UCLA can't get to a Final Four because they actually have uh, a, a bad uh, a Big Ten tournament with, with, with teams like Purdue and Michigan now in, uh, in their fold that they've got to jump over and they end up getting like on a on the five line and they've got a much harder road to get back and this is going to be money that they're going to be losing out on as a school with revenues and 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 merchandising and and how well people want to see UCLA even if they're not from the LA area. So again, let me know what you guys think. Mike and I will be with you tonight on the Wise Guys. If you're watching this on Sunday, go back and watch our show uh from last night, it's uh, we're joined tonight by uh, by longtime friend of show Alex Ruiz from the Row Seven Podcast. We'll talk a little college football. We're going to talk so uh, we're going to talk NFL opening weekend. Uh, we've actually got a little bit of baseball news coming up, and typically whatever else happens when we go off the rails. So I will see you guys here a little later on this week. Take care.